Now, today we have a real treat in the studio. Rabbi Marvin Heyer is a two-time Academy Award winner, the founder of the Simon Weisenthal Center, and a major advocate for human rights and tolerance around the world. Rabbi Heyer even said a prayer at U.S. President Donald Trump's inauguration, and today he joins us here in the studio. Thanks so much for joining us. It's a pleasure to be here. Great. So, Rabbi, let's start with some of the hard issues, all right? We, we've seen a frightening increase in anti-Semitism and anti-Semitic acts, not only in the United States, but across the world. What do you attribute this to? Well, <clears throat> first of all, uh, this spate is uh, frightening. Uh, you know, it's uh, geographically. <clears throat> My, I was a rabbi in Vancouver, and today the Jewish Community Center in Vancouver was, was, uh, had to be evacuated because of a bomb threat. And this is happening in the United, throughout everywhere in the United States and uh, in other countries. It's very alarming. It just shows you that there's a climate in the air. See, there were many who said, well, this had to do with an election in the United States that elected President Trump. And now we see that it has no geographic boundaries. It goes to other countries as well. It's not just the United States that's being targeted. I think that the reason is that the bigots and anti-Semites that are out there perceive this to be a climate in where they're frightened that uh, a new administration may be friendly to Israel. And that might be attracting anti-Semites around the world to react. Uh, you know, because otherwise, look, every Jewish institution in the United States for decades, the Assigned Ways all sent uh, Jewish Community Centers, Federation buildings, we all have protection. Once we used to have guards without guns. Uh, years ago, we changed to guards with guns. So there was always a threat. But this spate, continuing over three or four months, with telephone calls being made, uh, and now crossing borders, suggests to me that these haters and bigots perceive that there may be some good news installed for Israel and are trying to retaliate. Now, you know, you chose to give a prayer at the inauguration of U.S. President Donald Trump when there were so many who refused to do so. And many people from the American Jewish community themselves were condemning the new leader. Why did you choose to do that in the face of so much backlash? <clears throat> First of all, I think it would be preposterous uh, for somebody to say, that they're going to turn down a request to say a prayer at an inauguration. And let me, say, let me tell you why. How many countries are there in the world where Jews can walk safely, wear yarmulkes? If you're a chassid, you can wear a shrimal. How many countries can we tick off? Europe? No longer. No more in Paris. You can't really do that. The chief rabbi in Paris has recommended that people should take a low profile, take your keep on, put it in your pocket if you go going through neighborhoods. The United States has been the greatest country in the diaspora to Jews. We have reform, conservative, orthodox, we have yeshivas, uh, secular Jews, we have uh, Hasidic Jews in Williamsburg and in Borough Park and Flatbush who feel at home, can wear their kapotas without any fears. So when, a, when you're invited, to say a prayer, they didn't ask me to make a political speech. They asked me to say a prayer. When you're invited to say a prayer for a country that has been so great to Jews, it would be an insult. And in my opinion, it would create doubts in the part of non-Jews who would say, can you imagine the Jews? Look how they live here freely. There's a request that a rabbi should say a prayer, and he turns it down. That's why I accept it. I can, I can understand that. Now, you know, speaking of the American Jewish community and kind of the reactions to Donald Trump as the new U.S. president, there have been a lot of negative, there has been a lot of negative backlash towards Trump's fresh travel ban against six uh, Muslim-majority countries. What is your take on that, and how do you think the Jewish community should be reacting to that well, travel ban? Well, first of all, we oppose that. The original ban that was put out, the Simon Wiesnall Center spoke against it. We don't like to see a ban against where even people with green cards were caught and could not enter, re-enter the country. Now they've reworked the ban. It's a different kind of a ban. It may pass. The Supreme Court would have to eventually rule. 
but Jews are always going to be sensitive to the immigrants. My parents were immigrants, and they were welcomed in this country. They came with practically nothing. So I'm never going to be an advocate to keep immigrants out. I think that would be, for me, very difficult to do when I consider the fact that my parents were immigrants, and thank God they were allowed into this country. Absolutely. Speaking of tolerance, I understand that you are actually building a special new museum in Jerusalem. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, I'll tell you what happened. Uh, we uh, built the Museum of Tolerance Los Angeles in 1993. And in February 1993, a month after we opened, uh, Teddy Kolak visited the Museum of Tolerance unannounced. And he it was the mayor of Jerusalem, and he left me a message to call him at the Beverly Wilshire Hotel. And I called him, and he said, Rabbi Haya, I want you to come to Jerusalem as soon as possible. I said, why is that? I want you to build a museum of tolerance in Jerusalem. I said, Mr. Mayor, I, I have no intention of doing that. I said, we've spent every last cent, $55 million. And we couldn't build a museum of tolerance in Jerusalem. He said, I didn't tell you to build. I told you to come and get the land. Building is another thing. You, you have time to build, but it's important to get the land. So I came there. He, was, he took me around for two days in a broken car, and he couldn't find a place that he liked. So he said to me, you'll have to come back in six months. He lost the election to Ed Olmert, and he still called me, said, you have to come back again. I came back, he walked into Ayod Olmert's office, who was then mayor, and he said, Ayod, give this man a piece of land, not in the hills, but in the middle of the city somewhere, because one day Israel is going to want to have the kind of institution that he, they've created in Los Angeles, a museum of tolerance. Well, I know we cannot wait until the grand opening. Rabbi, thank you so much for coming in, and we hope to have you back again soon. It'd be my pleasure.